I'm pleased to have uh, Bill Johnston with us. He's the uh, president of the Toronto Real Estate Board, and uh, he's active, uh, active realtor I'm as well. currently with Royal LePage. Uh, I do uh, primarily residential work, a uh, little commercial work as time has gone by, and teach uh, 12 uh, courses, mandatory continuing education credit courses that I've written over the past several years. And it's kind of a fun sidelight to my uh, ongoing brokerage activities. I'm a lawyer as well as a real estate broker. I've been on the board of directors at TREB for, I guess, eight or nine years. And I'm current president uh, between July 1st of this year and June 30th of next year. I'll be president of the Toronto Real Estate Board. Kind of an interesting time to be president of a real estate board in Canada, given the uh, foo fra that we've had with the uh, Competition Bureau. And I'm quite happy to touch on uh, the Competition Bureau settlement, if you wish, uh, during question period. I don't want to belabor it because I really think it's irrelevant to, uh, to most of us in terms of our day-to-day -day activity. Um, about 20 years ago, uh, I was visiting a cottage. Friends of ours, uh, and their kids were about the same age as ours, babies at the time, uh, rented the cottage on Georgian Bay. And uh, Gary, our friend who had invited us, uh, was sort of a senior member of the Bank of Montreal uh, staff. And he was preparing some notes uh, for the, the current uh, uh, chair of the bank at that time. And he was using a term, disintermediated. Some of you may be familiar with that term. Think about it. We are the intermediary between the buyer and the seller in the real estate brokerage transaction. That's an enviable position. Really what we are is the general contractor in the real estate brokerage transaction. And that's an enviable position that you and I as real estate professionals in the US and Canada have enjoyed for many, many decades. And as the general contractor, and it's an apt analogy to use in the world of real estate for obvious reasons, as the general contractor, we are in the position of getting the thousands or tens of thousands of dollars of commission when a deal is done. Every other participant in the real estate brokerage transaction is a sub-trade getting a few nickels on the deal. When you think about it, the mortgage broker, the banker, the title insurer, the property inspector, the lawyer and others, the stager, et cetera, et cetera, the, the planet uh, floor plan maker, the virtual tour company, they get a few nickels on the deal. And you and I get the tens of thousands of dollars by being in that enviable position of the general contractor. And sometimes we assume that we have some sort of God-given right to that role because we've enjoyed it for so long. And in fact, we don't. And what you and I need to recognize is that there are barbarians at the gates of our empire, if you will, who've been accumulating over the past several years, and in fact decades, who want to replace us as the general contractor in the real estate brokerage transaction. Why do you think Microsoft, General Motors, Home Depot, the title insurers, the lawyers, and others are currently in the real estate brokerage business or are in the process of trying to ferret their way in? Because they see the tens of billions of dollars of commission flowing to us on an annual basis, and they want to take it from us. They want to replace us. And it's happening today. It's happening today, whether you and I like it or not. Those pressures from outside are there, they're real, and they're mounting. And the only way that you and I can preserve our position as the general contractor in the real estate brokerage transaction is by aspiring to the highest level of professionalism. Deliver the goods on the ground, and the consumer will continue to come to us for real estate brokerage services. What makes us the general contractor in the real estate brokerage transaction is, thank God, today still most consumers, when they want to buy and or sell real estate, call one of us first, right? It's that first call that puts us in this general contractor position, this enviable position. Well, what happens if we get, quote, disintermediated? What if we get removed from the central position in the real estate brokerage transaction, cast aside? This is what the Bank of Montreal was worried about and other banks were worried about back in the late 80s, early 1990s, because they saw that they were being, quote, disintermediated, removed from the position, the central position between the, the bank depositor and perhaps the, uh, the uh, investment firm. 
You see, for decades, the banks were the physicians. We dutifully go and deposit our money into the bank. Uh, those of you who are old enough will remember the, the days when banks were only open between 10 and 3. Remember that? On Monday to Friday, 10 to 3. And if you showed up at the bank and wanted to take some of your money out, it was like you were a criminal. You had to have a little book, and you had to sign all these papers, and they kind of sneer at you. You want to take your money out? Why? Leave it with us. We're making money on it. You were a criminal. Well, look what's happened to the banking world. Now they're open seven days a week, a lot of them. And eight until eight, or eight until ten at night. Now they have to be service-oriented. Why? Because you and I got sick to death of them slapping us in the face because we wanted to borrow our own money. And we started going elsewhere, dealing direct instead of dealing through the bank. And banks got wise and they thought, oh God, we don't want to be disintermediated. What are we going to do? Well, the answer was they had to give better service. They had to be more client-oriented. Yeah. No longer could they treat us like criminals when we showed up to take out our money. They adapted, they changed. And today, banks have their own stock brokerages and, and, and a whole lot of offerings that they didn't have 20 years ago. And folks, the deal for us in the world of real estate is, if we want to stay at the center of the real estate brokerage transaction, we have to change. We have to lose some of the bad habits that we've accumulated over the past 20 years and develop new good habits that will carry us forward into the future and maintain our position in that, in that central role, if we want. It was interesting listening to Shane uh, talking about the wonderful work he's done on social media and the, the tremendous sort of state-of-the-art ideas Shane has about how you and I as real estate brokerage uh, professionals can use social marketing to build our business, because really that's the bottom line, isn't it? Any of you familiar with Mike Ferry? Any of you ever heard of Mike Ferry? Yeah. Well, isn't he good? Have you been to uh, Mike Ferry's session? Yeah, he's wonderful, isn't he? About, uh, I guess it was January of 1998, uh, Mike Ferry came to the Premier Ballroom at uh, Leslie and Highway 7 in Richmond Hill. And it was the best deal going. Uh, three days of Mike Ferry, 50 bucks. Were any of you there at that particular session? Yeah, remember that? So the Premier Ballroom was like going to the, the chapel of born-again realtors, and Mike was up there, and he said at the beginning it was three days, 50 bucks, best deal in town. Chapter and verse A to Z, he was going to tell us how to transform our real estate careers from mediocrity to the stratosphere of real estate sales. All you have to do is listen to me for three days. I'll give it all to you. And he was right. Over the night, but, but he had become a bit jaded by that time. He'd been doing it for over 20 years, had done extremely well for himself, had written books, tapes, retreats, the whole thing. And, but he'd become a little discouraged because he had reflecting on his 20 years plus of spreading the gospel, uh, according to real estate gurus, uh, he had noticed that probably 99% of the people who came to his chapel to be born again realtors didn't do a goddamn thing differently when they left. Right? They bought his books and tapes, they listened to all, oh, they said, oh, this is fantastic. Oh, God, what great ideas. And then they went back to the office and they're sort of sitting there basking in the afterglow of three days with Mike Ferry and thinking, oh, boy, that was good. I can hardly wait to get started uh, tomorrow. Today, I just want to kind of let it seep in. You know, kind of soak it all up, integrate it into my new way of thinking about real estate brokerage, and uh, tomorrow I'll get started. He said, and here's what's going to happen for the vast majority of you. And, and by the way, he said, I know, and this was day, morning of day one, I know you're going to go back, you're going to be inspired by what I tell you, he said, and buy my books and tapes. Some of you are going to spend hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars of, on my stuff, he said, and thanks in advance. But here's what's going to happen. You're going to go back to that office, put those books and tapes on the shelf above your desk, and you're going to say, I'll get started tomorrow. He said, and tomorrow you're going to go into the office and you're going to look at those books and tapes and say, ah, I can hardly wait to get started 
But not today. Today it's too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry, I'm too happy, I'm too sad. I've got to finish the crossword puzzle. It's a great day for golf or tennis or anything but real estate. <laughs> I'll start tomorrow. He said, in days, weeks will go by and you won't do a darn thing differently. Just as the vast majority of you aren't going to go out there and start blogging and tweeting and Facebooking and LinkedIn-ing and all that stuff. Why? Because we are creatures of habit. We're addicted to habit. We don't like to change. We call ourselves rational creatures, and then we look at our behavior. Some of us spend 40 years trying to lose the same 40 pounds. How stupid is that? Eat less, exercise more. The answers are simple, right there. But because we are such creatures of habit, addicted to habitual behavior, we don't change. We don't take the few simple steps it would take to get involved more with social media or to go out there and knock on those doors on a daily basis whether we feel like it or not. So we wallow in mediocrity year after year after year wondering why. And the answer so often is because that person we see in the mirror every morning doesn't really want to change behavior. Willie Nelson, that great philosopher, one of my favorite songsters and philosophers, if you haven't read his book, The Tao of Willie, get your hands on it, you will love it. Willie Nelson says, I'm going to keep doing it wrong until I like it that way. <laughs> and how many of us are like that? Right? Oh, the heck with it. I'll just wallow in mediocrity. I don't really want to think about all that. Oh, and the blogging, and what if the computer crashes, and who knows? So we stay the same. We don't have to. But the degrees of freedom you and I enjoy in the world of real estate, in the world of real estate brokerage, has a sharp edge on the other side. The fact that we cannot be managed as real estate salespeople, the fact that we have this tremendous amount of freedom, means that we have the freedom to fail, right? And many of us do. Many of us fail to capitalize upon the excellent skills we have as salespeople because we're such lousy self-managers. As Mike Ferry was pointing out, we allow whether we feel like it or not to creep in. If you and I had real jobs, right, and you had to be there at 9 and leave at 5 and here's what you do, we would do it whether we felt like it or not, correct? But in the world of real estate sales, we get up in the morning and we think, oh, it's tabula rasa. I got the whole day stretched out before me. I could um, do some of those boring, repetitive things like go out and try to uh, create new business or... I could do the puzzle, or play tennis, or golf, or just kind of hang out and yak with my colleagues about how tough the market is. I think I'll do that. And when I feel like it, I'll go and do the hard stuff. But we never really feel like it, do we? Why do health clubs load up on January in their deal on lifetime memberships? Because they know we're all hung over and want to lose that 10 pounds we put on the holidays, so we sign up lifetime. You know, it's, it's $100 for a year, $200 for a lifetime, right? Why? Because they know that by mid-February you could blow a cannon through the place and not kill anyone. We keep committing to change, and then we don't follow through because we have too much freedom in the world of real estate. So, given all that, what can we do? What can we focus on if we want to? 